Paul Nicholson with a typically understated entrance to the stage. And if you think those dance moves were good, you ain't seen nothing, our kid. Because there's a video doing the rounds on the internet, social media, of Paul Nicholson from a while back doing Saturday Night Fever at an exhibition. And my word, I had to bleach my eyeballs having watched that. It was a sight to behold. Thankfully, none of that business from the asset tonight. As he takes on Dawson Marshall. The Canadian making his debut on the European Tour. The young man from Medicine Hat in Canada. It is the asset versus Arsene Darson and Mike Lawrence in the commentary box for me for it. Yes, I want to visit Medicine Hat, Alberta, and buy a Medicine Hat. Um, what is a Medicine I Hat? I don't know, but I'd like to find out and buy one. Okay, that's fair enough. But yes, it could be a jockey, couldn't he? Uh, the size of him, 22-year-old... Dawson and Paul Nicholson wearing his Das Kapital logoed shirt, the asset in German, which he wears uh, when he's playing here on the European tour. Wins over Steve West, Nathan Aspinall, and Adrian Gray for Paul Nicholson. Dawson Michelle come through the UK qualifiers as well, applying his trade. There. The bag Paul to throw first. Game on. Paul Nicholson getting us underway then. Dawson Michelle with wins over Adam Huckvale and Alan Norris beating uh, Chuck Norris 6 5 to book his place here. The Canadian. Well, there's some serious players that these two have taken out in qualifying there because Steve West 59. is playing some good darts. Alan Norris is a former Euro Tour winner. Uh, this is, it is tough just to qualify for these events. 121. Dawson Merchant. I mean, by rights, these two, as, a, as Paul Nicholson, a Geordie who spent time living in Australia, and Dawson Merchant, a Canadian who's now living in St. Helens, these two, by rights, should have the most mangled, horrific accents known to man. They should be like two versions of Dart Jan Molby. It should be a mess. And who knows, it might be in time with Dawson. A sort of mid-Atlantic accent, maybe. Well, imagine a cross between John Parton and Michael Smith, or... I don't know. Justin Timberlake Canadian? He might be. Justin oh, Timberlake oh, and Dave Chisnell. <laughs> if you can imagine <laughs> such an amalgamation, that may be what Dawson Marshall or Marshall, Mardell, Mardell... Oh, no. It matters not, he's banging in the 180s. Pulls down to a finish, a big one at that. Strong start to this. Could be a very strong start to this. Ooh. Look of withering, look of disgust at that dart in the seven from the asset. Oh, well, surely done. And a way to go, 104. And an early break of throw for the 22-year-old. 12 dart leg, ton plus check out. Little bounce back down the centre of the hockey. Not sure Nicholson's going to appreciate that one. We saw Dawson at the US Masters last year. He beat James Wade in the first round. Uh, Wadey missing six match darts there. Yeah, phenomenal scenes in Vegas when that happened. Dawson bouncing around the stage on claiming the biggest win of his career. And let's have this right. Paul Nicholson should have made the final day in Saarbrücken. He won his opening game and then played Benito van der Pass and managed to squander just match dart after match dart after match dart. I mean, he, he, he was 4-0 up, I believe, in that game. And I think it may have been 5-1 as well. He should have won that, oh, and he found a way to lose it. Yeah, he was sick as a parrot, understandably, after that defeat. Yeah, because he'd built it up and up and up as well. He was really, really fired up for that game, and it was all going according to plan. Now, he has been very fired up for a while about playing here in Sindelfing, and he absolutely loves this place. He considered it, you know, the, the home of the Euro Tour, if you like, and when you see how big the European Tour has become, that is no small thing. 
So he has been champing at the bit to get back in big stage darts. Oh my, Dawson. Needing another one of those to have a go at the double, but it's been an impressive start, this one. The winner of this will take on number 12 seed Mervyn King tomorrow. Yeah, Mervyn, a, a former winner on the Euro Tour and in this very venue as well. Beat Michael Smith in the final. I'll we'll go back a few years for that. Merv rode off home on his motorbike with the trophy. Double ten. 32. So a chance then for Paul to immediately break back. Another one of those for tops. He's not moving. Because he doesn't need to. Never quite sure when a player is looking at 20 for tops of two darts in their hand, how that first dart in the 20 looks. But Nicholson, quite happy staying where he was and just going over the top of it. Looked like flights were set up quite invitingly and he finds the target at the top of the board to break back immediately. 57. There's just two more first round matches remain. This one and then Robert Marianovic, one of the home nation qualifiers up against Andy Bolton, another UK qualifier. But the second round taking shape nicely, kicking off tomorrow afternoon with Ian White against Madders Rasma. We've also got Dave Chisnell, Yella Klassen, Gerwin Price, Michael Smith, some Whitlock in action tomorrow afternoon. The evening session includes Daryl Gurney up against Jamie Lewis, Michael Van Gerwen against Alan Tabern, Peter Wright against Kirk Shepard, Rob Cross, reigning world champion against Vincent Vandervoort ending uh, tomorrow evening session. That should be a good eat. Well, Vincent played like he did this afternoon, 103 and a half average from the Dutch destroyer. Then Rob Cross is going to have his hands full. 140. But these two right now are both averaging over 100. It's an impressive start to this. Let's see if they can maintain it. 85. Never sure. Dawson on his debut on the Euro Tour. Whether he'd raise his game. Whether he'd be able to play his best stuff. Nicholson obviously suffered that disappointment against Benito in Saarbrücken. He put too much pressure on himself to come here and perform, but at the minute they are both performing. The only thing he can guarantee from this game, it's going to be quite intense. Fifty-eight. All you require one hundred and six. The asset not even looking at Marshall when he's throwing. He's just facing away, waiting for the call from George Noble. Double eighteen. Would have given him a dart at double 16. 46. Dawson, you call 158. A grimace from Paul Nicholson. But uh, Dawson won't take out the 158 now. 58. Well, he took out 80 last leg. Ooh, where's George going? George He's off. Just, uh, He's having a word. Maybe uh, well, you don't mess with George Noble. Some calling out from the Thank you. crowd. I know there has been somebody whistling while Boy, players are 60. throwing. Which has been particularly annoying, but uh, Paul just needs to focus. Double top. Two tens. 40. Dawson, you require 100. Great dart. 60. Followed by two not so great ones. And Nicholson can go into the lead for the first time in this match. 20. 30, and that is exactly what happens. Paul Nicholson. 2 1 up in this one. Fighting it out for the right to face the king. Mervyn King, that is. We are overrun with 
royalty in darts, what with Corey Cadby. Also going by the nickname King, although Corey still down under. Not sure when he's going to be back. Turned up, won a title, made the final of the UK Open, flew back home to get married. I've not seen him since. <laughs> I've been too busy winning tournaments down in Australia. On three in a weekend. 100. Yes, and Michael van Gerwen being honoured with the Dutch equivalent of an MBE by the King of the Netherlands. So, touched by royalty, you could say. 140. Now, I'm not sure what benefits you get from being given the, what is it, the order of the knighthood of the orange nassau or whatever it's called yes w whether you're allowed to sort of um, herd sheep across drive uh, your goats through the center of a town yeah, exactly. on a sunday yeah, yeah that's sort of like business that. i'm not sure michael's got any goats michael would argue he is the goat the greatest of all time but not beating phil taylor's records because i'm a worse player than him mm, the 170 won't go now then, for a potential 11 data, 12 would do for Paul Nicholson for 3-1, a third consecutive leg. That's a great dart, double 12 the target. Great guide. Does not 69. use it. Well, well, a great chance to put some daylight between himself and the Canadian. And, well, Michelle steps up. We're double 18 and we are all square again. Game on. Well, look at that. Both averaging 100. First nine in the 100 and teens. This is really, really impressive stuff. It's been a while since Paul has thrown these sort of numbers on stage. This is... Dawson's first taste of Euro Tour action. I know we're only four and a half legs in here, but hats off to these two. Sixty. Can they maintain it? It may be down to one of them. If they can maintain it, that'll be enough because maintaining this standard right the way through the game, it can be done, of course it can. We've seen Vincent average 103 and a half today. Yes, just looking through, yes, Vincent, uh, 103.4. Certainly by far the best of the afternoon session. First dart is very, very good for Paul Nicholson. 125. Dawson's hair has now grown back. He lost a bet with young Roxy James Warner. Rodriguez around about the time of the World Championship qualifiers, December last year. Lost a bet. Shaved it off. <laughs> Looked like skeletal. <laughs> 60. Ton 40. Dawson's back in the leg. Not going to get that. Not going to get much. 41. Not going to get much at all. Not even down to a finish. So six starts from here for Paul Nicholson to go back into the lead. Not had more than a leg between them in this game. A little bit awkward. Now he decides to move. 60. So we'll be back. We'll be back for 56. Dawson could put a bit of pressure on it and will put a bit of pressure on the shot. A lot of pressure on the shot, in fact. All you require, 56. To nudge back in front. For Geordie, who represents Australia and now lives in West Sussex. Only going to get one dart for the leg. Missed the big number, the fatal mistake. And he's decided to leave double 16, even though he's had to move across. 40. Because that dart that went in the seven can't have been helping him. And he'd already hit tops in this game. I just wonder, maybe that would have been the wiser leave. 
Again, Nicholson refuses to look. Oh, well, a let off you have to say for Paul Nicholson. Another bite at the cherry. The red bit. Double eight. No messing that time. Well. Dawson Marshall mentored by the silencer Jeff Smith, former Lakeside finalist. Saw him in Vegas last year. He was 60. on hand just trying to prepare Dawson ahead of each of his games, practicing with him, talking to him, trying to get his head right. Now committed to 45. basing himself over here. Runs a basically a fashion label, if you like. Finley Bridge, I think it's called. Named after a, a bridge near his hometown of Medicine Hat. 96. And well, for some players, you know, to have something completely different, a distraction away from the game, can can be a help to them. Well, I mean, there's plenty of them who still work. I mean, uh, Johnny Clayton, for example, the most recent winner on the pro on the Euro Tour, still working as a plasterer. And the asset asked him after his win, you know, are you going to give it up, do the darts full time? And he said he's got decisions to make. And you know, very nearly added another PDC Nine. title to his collection at the weekend, but was beaten in a last leg decider by the Black Cobra, Jeffrey Desvan. Things are happening for Johnny Clayton. He looks set to represent Wales at the World Cup. Needs another to pressure Mershaw. And does pressure Mershaw. It's a two-darter for the Canadian. A three-dart finish for Paul Nicholson. Does he go double-double? I don't think he is. No. Treble-double it is. 68. Well, it's gone with the throw each of the first five legs, but a chance here for Nicholson to break and put two legs between himself and the Canadian. Looking at double 16, and that's a good 105 out shot. Advance back to the crowd from Nicholson. And maybe that is uh, just what he needs to give him that little boost to see this one over the line. Well, first time we've seen a two-leg gap opened up and I could tell that Paul Nicholson felt confident there because when Paul plays at the Grand Prix in Ireland, double start format, as he looks to fill this up oh, and does do no, Paul Nicholson no. with his first maximum. When he plays that double start, it will start on double 16 and then immediately switch to treble 19 because he feels that the same area of the board, he's got a feel for where he's going. Now, that was just that in reverse. Treble 19... Then he was looking at the 16 for double. And he just felt that he would have been a lot more confident with that route that he often practices in reverse when he's been preparing for the Grand Prix in Dublin. But Marshall, he missed a dart there, a dart in the previous leg, which he lost, two darts in the third leg, which he lost, two darts in the second leg, which he lost. Every single leg that Paul Nicholson has won, Dawson Marshall has had darts to win it. Now... It's fair to say that Paul has had his own chances in a couple of legs at Dawson's one. So this, this game could be anything. And they're both averaging mid to high 90s. It's dropped a little bit from the ton plus that we saw earlier in the match. Yes, that was down to those missed doubles in um, it was the fifth leg, I think, wasn't mm. it, where uh, both players sort of went. 99. Uh, we require 161. Around the houses, but... Well, should stay there. Does stay there. Single nine. Yes, good thing from Paul glancing at the scoreboard and seeing that Dawson's still back on 255. So, Paul will head back 
with a possible 13 data in his sights. 58. Boy requires 32. And goes within one leg of victory. One more 24. missed doubles. Fair ones you can afford to miss when your opponent's not on a finish. However, it has been unconvincing on the outer ring from Nicholson in this game. It's been unconvincing for the pair of them, really, on the outer ring. Double two. Oh, and hits it that time. Paul Nicholson, when he won his tour card back at Q School, he said he wanted to go out there and break some hearts. He is looking to break a young Canadian man's heart here in Sindelfingen on his European Tour debut, and he's going about it pretty efficiently. He has had his share of fortune. He's had to rely on his opponent missing... Odd darts at double here and there right the way through this game. But it has been the asset who's been able to collect himself and find a way to win those legs. Mervyn King awaiting the winner of this one. Then one more match to go to complete the first round. Robert Marianovic against Andy Bolton. With Darren Webster awaiting the winner of that one. 100. Tomorrow evening. Mervyn King against the winner of this one will also be uh, tomorrow evening. Well, Paul Nicholson here. Is that in? It was in, and that's a 174. And because he's fired in three big trebles, he gets away with the fact he probably shouldn't have been going in that order for those trebles. But a 174, it's very difficult to argue against it. He's on a potential 12 data. And what a way to finish it this would be. That won't happen. A snarl, oh, another sneer. We saw a bit of that from Max Hopp in the previous game. 68 scored. All right, 70 scored. And leaves him 64 for the match. Awesome Dawson, the young Canadian. He's living on borrowed time, you feel. 60. Can't find a treble. 64. Another one of those. Leaves the double. And Paul Nicholson, who'd been dying to get back on this stage in Sindelfing and delivers with a 6-2 victory, a mid to high 90s average, and the asset is back and winning games on the Euro Tour this year. One more game for you tonight. Robert Marianovic and Andy Bolton coming up to round things off. Paul, congratulations. Back on the Euro Tour. I know playing here in Sindelfingen meant a lot to you. What's it mean to come up here and perform in the way that you did? It's, uh, it's brilliant. Uh, it's been five years since I was in the final here and it still hurts. Even to this day, um, I look at double 12 and I look at it with evil eyes uh, and double six as well. But it was, a, it was a difficult game today because I knew that Dawson having his debut today, he was going to have adrenaline. Uh, but for me, it was, the pressure was on me, and I felt I was up to it. I had great preparation. You know, I worked with the Premier League like you did last night, but 
Uh, I took my, myself away from the practice room, I came backstage and I got my own zone. And um, it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. Well, you're going to go up against a man who has won in this venue, Mervyn King, in the next round. A man who, who's got so much experience. Is that level you played today, do you think that's going to be good enough to worry Mervyn maybe beating? Certain legs are. Uh, from a scoring perspective, early in the game, my first start was great. Uh, and if I can get it there, then I can keep the rhythm going. But when I start searching around the board, that's where I start finding trouble. And uh, the amount of grip changes I've had in the last few years, uh, it's all about just trying to find some sort of comfort under pressure. And when you take out shots like that 64, it, it means a lot to me because th there have been shots missed on doubles, uh, especially against Benito and Zarbrücken. So it, it uh, solidifies the confidence, the extra 5-10%. But against Mervyn, it's going to be a totally different prospect, but I, I know what he's about, and I know what I've got to do. Congratulations, Paul. Safely through to the next round. Paul Nicholson, the asset, who will face Mervyn King tomorrow. One more game for you this evening. And it's the last German we've got, Robert Marianovic, beginning his campaign for the final game of the night.